Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update on Tuesday, November 20th, 11.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. You are looking at record Greenland ice growth yesterday, 12 gigatons, unprecedented amounts of ice forming on the surface of Greenland, matching last year's record high back in mid-February. We're repeating record ice growth now, that is going to lead to record ice in the Arctic. As you can see, the, the line, like we predicted, rushing to the multi-decadal averages, soon to eclipse it sometime around winter. One of the highest ice volumes ever recorded in the last 15 years. Right now, across the Arctic, put your boom goggles on. It's true, kids. It's boom time. Let's get to the first graph, <laughs> if it ever downloads. Take a look at the vertically integrated smoke map. Smoke plume from California shrouds, Lehigh Valley skies yesterday, bone chilling cold, and snow on the way for the northeast. You can see the smoke plume here wrapping through Texas, coming up through the southeast, absolutely covering New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and the like. The Lehigh Valley was in a shroud, and soon they will be in the deep freeze. Check out the map. I'll leave you links to everything below where it says show more. Motorists advise Sierra Storm could dump a foot of snow during the Thanksgiving travel period. And Dot advises to have travel plans ready before the snow flies. With up to a foot of snow expected in the high Sierras this week during the Thanksgiving holiday, the National Weather Service on Monday issued winter storm watches for the greater Tahoe area and Mono County. Two waves of weather are expected to move through the Sierras this week, likely impacting travel and totally burying the region. When we get to the GFS models, there are over five feet of snow predicted for the entire Sierras in the central Sierras Record snows are going to tilt North America to the west. We'll get to it. Stick with us. Snow squall to threaten dangerous travel in the northeast on the busiest driving day of the year. Well, heads up. That already happened. It's now Tuesday. It's no longer Wednesday. Travelers going to and from the northeast on Wednesday could wind up battling wintry weather. The Wednesday before Thanksgiving has long been denoted as one of the busiest travel days of the year, but it's now Tuesday, which is now over. With people going near and far to reach loved ones for the holiday, they're now leaving earlier. Apparently AccuWeather hasn't caught up on the info. We give you the facts. The swath of snow will stretch from the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes on Tuesday night through much of the Northeast on Wednesday. We have a concern that one snow squall associated with the leading edge of the Arctic air may reach the northern and western suburbs of New York City. Philly, Washington, D.C., and Baltimore during Wednesday evening. According to AccuWeather senior meteorologist Alec Sosnowski, <laughs> say it ain't so ski, check out the snowy travel Wednesday evening. We'll blow up the image for you blind people. Cold winds coming across Lake Erie, making it dreary in Albany. Excellent snowmaking conditions for all of the Pocono Mountains. Heads up, big ball to Jack Frost. You might be tiny, but you kick it. Slippery roads, sudden whiteouts, rapid freeze-up follows. They're warning that snow squalls could catch people off guard. And it could lead to hundreds of accidents. Which won't be schmaccidents, because we just warned you about them. So if you see the snow start flying, do not speed up. Slow down, especially if it's in your town. Are you picking up what we're putting down? Sometimes the worst pace to be at the onset of snow during a squall is on the major interstate highways, Snowski said. Say it ain't Snowski. One 10 minute snow squall can put thousands of people at risk for getting into an accident. Given the bumper to bumper conditions and people traveling at high speeds during the holiday season, this could be a reason for the schmeezing. And that is called a smash-up. Vepic proportions, which we're predicting to be reporting on in just 24 hours. Mark my words, epic smash-up somewhere in that region, which we'll be reporting on tomorrow.
at this time. Baltimore meteorologist Tony Pond is about to lie right to your face. In fact, he claims that 55 and 50 are close. I just allowed it. Oh my goodness. I don't know, high temperature this time of the year is 55 degrees, and we're going to come close to that today. The normal high is 55, and we're going to come close. Once we get towards Thanksgiving, it's going to feel like the middle of winter. Big change coming up temperature-wise. At least it's going to be quiet, though. We don't have any big storms in the forecast. Five degrees from 55 is close. Yes, but, uh, but they probably won't cold. break any cold top, temperature 46 records. 46 in Westminster, 47 in the 50s this afternoon. Storm system pulling away from us. Uh, this is a little clipper storm producing some moderate snow up in New England, and the cold air is going to rush in behind that system in stages, though. It's going to get uh, a little chilly tomorrow, and the real cold comes in at the end of the week. Uh, you can see it here on our jet stream forecast. Watch a little piece of the now famous polar vortex kind of sliding right across New England there, and that's going to drop the record cold temperatures into the Mid-Atlantic. <laughs> now uh, famous. I don't know if we'll break any records for the 22nd here in Baltimore, but it's certainly going to feel like it's uh, the middle of January or February. Take a look at these wind morning. chills. This is the forecast wind chills for Thursday morning, Thanksgiving morning. Say it ain't so a Shenandoah, nine. The wind chill 7.30 in the morning in Westminster. Forecast to be around 8. Parked in 11. 18 in downtown Baltimore. Low single digits out in western Maryland. The actual temperatures will be in the 20s, but the wind chills at least will be... Uh, Not make, that funnies. Meteorologist Tony Pond picking like it up and putting it down there. in your town, Baltimore. Heads up, Baltimore. AccuWeather Thanksgiving forecast calls for near record cold for other areas. Likely New York City. An Arctic blast will grip New York City and the tri-state area on Thanksgiving with temperatures only in the 20s and wind chills in the single digits. Skies will be clear overnight with temperatures dropping near freezing in the city and even colder in the north and west. I thought Manhattan was the best. Wednesday will be increasingly windy with sunshine mixing with some clouds and a flurry late in the afternoon as a cold front push pushes through the area. High winds will reach the lower 40s before dropping like a rock in the evening as colder air crashes into the region. Temperatures will drop into the 20s in the city, teens in the north and west burbs. Thanksgiving Day is looking like a wash as the Thanksgiving Day parade is predicted to be the coldest ever recorded since the 1800s. I don't even know if those blimps will hold helium. Highs won't even reach freezing, likely not getting above the mid-20s in downtown Manhattan, and the wind could make it feel like single digits and deflate those Thanksgiving Day blimps like shrimps. Yeah, and I love shrimp cocktail. Especially from the Gulf, where it's filled with petroleum. Blast of snow for New England before record cold Thanksgiving deflates the blimps. Across the Northeast this morning, winter weather advisories are in effect with much of New England anticipating snow. Ow! Around 7 a.m. Eastern, snowfall is expected to begin from Western Mass to Albany, as well as in Southern Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Snow showers from Buffalo to Waterloo, Watertown, and other towns are expected in New York, as long as they're near the Great Lakes. Widespread snowfall, 2 to 4 inches are possible. Some areas, even higher elevations, seeing as much as 6. That quicks. Minus 4 in Syracuse, possible lows Thanksgiving morning. Negative 16 in Burlington, minus 12 in Caribou, minus 2 in Portland. Nothing reading on the chart in Boston Thursday morning. 7 in New York, 13 in Philly, 17 in Washington, 11 in Pittsburgh, 23 in Cincy. Chi-Town, 18, 12 in Green Bay. That's the warm spot, Cincinnati. <laughs> Put your bikinis on. Thanksgiving Day is going to be a hot one. Frigid with wind chills in the northeast below zero in the teens in Washington, D.C., Pittsburgh to Philly. Record lows expected throughout the region with daytime temperatures forecast to be 20 to 35 degrees below normal. Anyone that believes in global warming at this moment is completely in a fantasy land. Temps should return to normal by weekend. According to these forecasters, on the West Coast, much-needed rain should be falling soon, necessitating record snows in the Sierras, which are coming soon. Beginning Wednesday evening, 6 to 15 inches of snow is possible through the Sierras, which could make travel in those areas quite difficult, you think? Earlier on Wednesday morning and perhaps lasting much of the day, showers are likely from Seattle to L.A. 
turning that ash to mud and wreaking chaos in the burn zone. Brief whiteouts for some. Gusty wind Wednesday. Record cold Thursday into Friday. Holy macaroni, what is happening? Where did all the global warming go? Records in jeopardy, lows Thursday, 10, beating the record of 11 back in 2008. Forecast for Thursday's highs 20, which would crush the record high of 24 in 2008. And the low Friday of 5. Hey, I wonder why these records were set in 2008. I wonder if that was a solar minimum. Same exact time in history right now. Onondaga, Madison, and Southern Oneonta counties in New York from 7 a.m. Wednesday till 10 p.m. A winter weather advisory has been issued. North Oneonta County from 4 a.m. Wednesday until 10 p.m. Wednesday. Oswego, 7 a.m. Wednesday to 7 p.m. Wednesday. Jefferson, heads up, prepper nurse. You're about to get buried. I would have prepped in the South. But I guarantee no one's going to get to you. Records in jeopardy. There they are. This is coming from Peter Hall. Bitter cold November standards are moving just in time for Thanksgiving across CNY and the Northeast U.S. Let's check the GFS model because my voice is getting weak. And what you're going to see is southern snow all the way down into the L.A., San Diego area up in the mountains through your 1st of December. More snows return to Mexico's. And I can't wait till January till the snow falls in Florida. But before then, we're going to have record snows. Look at the forecast for the Sierras from November 29th through the 30th and onward. It's predicting an unknown amount of snow above four feet. And with this type of scale, that could be 10 to 20 feet of snow. Do you remember when Washington got tilted last year? It's now moving south. This type of snow totals in a GFS model are record breaking. 22, 20, 19, 36, 48 plus everywhere in this region. That is hundreds of square miles with four foot plus. Looks like a quick blizzard through Michigan and Iowa. Maine is going to get buried a month before winter. The snowpack is going to be record. Check out the Southern Appalachians. I'm not making it up. I'm showing you the models. And the models show heavy snow all the way south into the desert. Monument Valley is going to get it. While we're there on the 29th, take a look. Heads up. Should be beautiful. Uh-oh, let's check out Popo. Popo blasting off live. Let's go to it. Man, this is fantastic. Thank you, Volcano YT. Popo Catapetal, while we're doing the update, is exploding live. I did see lava plume. I did see some glow. This is amazing. I love it when this happens live. And then Chinese people are speaking. It's amazing. God, I love that. Now, this refresh is only every few seconds, so it's not really a, a stream of sorts. Oh, there's the lava. You can see a spray happening. Popo has been on the uptick for the last 24 hours. It's been erupting all day. So come over here and check it out. And we'll put this on pause. We also have some activity here at Saku. Swanosima going off today as well. So Sakurajima seems to be uh, picking up while Popo is erupting live. Awesome. Look at that new plume coming out. Let's blow it up. Just for the little plume. 14 minutes in, we have live eruption at Popo in Mexico. 
We'll get back to it. This is exciting. I'm not even fighting. Fighting. I mean, I feel the tingles. It's almost like a case of shingles. Heavy rain and mountain snow for the West Coast coming from the National Weather Service. We are Weather Ready Nation ambassadors at the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, so we bring you the facts on a daily basis. A series of Pacific storms will deliver multiple rounds of heavy rain and mountain snow Wednesday into Thanksgiving holiday. And if the GFS models are correct, we'll dump record continent tift tilting amounts in the Sierras by December 1st. My prediction is 10 feet in many regions. Mark my words, I'm not going to be off by a few inches. Forecasting like this is a cinch. Is <laughs> Series of Pacific storms will deliver multiple rounds of heavy rain and mountain snow Wednesday in the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. There's an elevated concern for flash flooding, mudslides, and debris flows near the wild burn scars in California. A terrible task for people looking for thousands still missing. A weak storm system will cross the Great Lakes bringing, yes, lake effect snow. A month before winter, record snows falling in the southern Appalachians and other areas. Let's talk about the UK. They're not the only ones being left out. The beast from the east is back. And I ain't even smoking crack. UK weather forecast snow warning as beasts from the east to batter Britain this week. Shocking weather charts show the UK blanketed in snow as another beast from the east threatens to descend Britain this weekend, bringing sub-zero temperatures tomorrow. A mini beast from the east is forecast to bring icy weather from the Arctic Circle and plunge into the UK into the depths of winter early. According to the latest weather models, Yes, the so-called beast from the east is back. Was first coined last winter as temperatures plummeted and parts of the UK were hit with record amounts of snow in February. Now it's only November. A November to remember in the UK. And now with the winter season just weeks away, the whole of the UK is set to receive an icy tingle blast as winds from the Arctic descend on Britain and the Queen Mother shivers in her own britches. Britons in some parts of the country have already worked up the sleet and freezing blasts of the icy cold winds. But Wednesday is set to see more misery, misery, my bad, as cutting winds reaching ferocious speeds of up to 50 miles per hour, plummeting temperatures of zero C in some parts of the country early on Thursday morning, according to the latest Met Official Office forecast in our fear-mongering at the Express Co. UK. Thunderstorms brewing overhead combined with snow will bring the end of all life on the UK. People will be cut off, lorries will be stranded, and people in red jackets will bring you small packages of food to your car as you're left there to die. Whew. Check out the links below. The GFS model is showing record snow. And as in times past, the models continue to increase, to say the least. Heavy snows in the Alps will lead to moderate snow in the mountains of Spain. Now we know the snow in Spain does not fall mainly in the plain. It falls in the mountains, like fountains. And as we descend into the Grand Solar Minimum, it also falls in northern Africa. In Turkey, 18 inches up here in Slovenia. How I know that's even there is beyond me. Did you know? Seismic update, moderate uptick worldwide, especially on the Ring of Fire. Now, I was sent an email today from someone that said Edgar Casey had predicted that the rotational polar shift occurs when there's a seismic uptick in the Arctic, and we have experienced an uptick in seismicity in the Arctic over the last year, specifically the last eight months. Almost 20 magnitude four or greater earthquakes occurring over the last half a year up in the Arctic Circle. About 80 kilometers north of Svalbard. But at the same time, we are at a seismic drought. Now, what I mean by that, a lot of people are claiming there's a massive seismic uptick and a massive volcanic uptick. 
There are twice as many volcanoes that are normally erupting on Earth now, but they're all erupting at low magnitude. VEI 0 to 3. We are in a major volcanic drought for VEI 6 or greater eruptions worldwide. There are years uh, uh, in past times, 100 or more years ago, where there were multiple VEI 5 and 6 eruptions. And we haven't seen that in over a century. And all of the independent scientists and the people that are working in the same fields that we are and friends of this community have been predicting an uptick in major volcanic activity and seismic activity due to cosmic ray increase, like John Casey and me finding out today Edgar Casey back in the 1930s. Oppenheimer Ranch Project. and hundreds of other independent researchers confirming and predicting the same thing. So what it appears to be is that we go into a mega drought of major earthquakes and volcanic activity and then it ha the event happens. It's a rolling out of major catastrophic events worldwide that once they begin will not stop, will not cease for decades and will lead to massive amounts of global unrest. Now, I was talking about this earlier with Rex Bear live, and we'll be sharing that interview tomorrow, so look for it. The Ring of Fire has moderate uptick 5.1 in the Kuril Islands, could be volcanic in nature, 5.5 Kyushu, Japan, 5.3 Maluka Sea, Indonesia region, Another 5.0, Papua New Guinea. I'm sure a lot of people are fear-mongering about the 4.1 in northern Idaho, it, uh, probably claiming that this has something to do with Yellowstone. It doesn't. As the Earth spreads and swells at this time of high cosmic ray flux, areas like the Basin and Range through Nevada and all the way up here through northern Idaho, up in Montana, in this region, it's called Horst and Graben, Basin and Range. It's spreading. It's always spreaded through geologic history. This is the type of normal faulting that's normal in this region. If the Earth is getting larger and we are spreading on plate margins, we would expect this normal activity, nothing to be scared of. 5.5 near Peru, 56 kilometers. And if I could just pan this in, nothing up in the Arctic. Thankfully, no major quakes, but they will be coming. So you should be preparing. Worldwide Volcano News Update, Popo. On the uptick, we know it. Fuego, Ducono, Suanosima. Come check it out. Now let's get to the live footage. Yes! <coughs> Popo still active. Bottom left. And a crack of tail out here, about 50 kilometers out. Stromboli has gone quiet, but come check out the live activity. Popo has been on the uptick all day, 24 hours. This is near millions of people. I can't imagine you get a good night's sleep when that's happening. <laughs> Thank you, Volcano YT. NASA concerned about the culture of inappropriateness at SpaceX, namely... Can you believe Elon Musk took a half of a fake hit of a joint on Joe Rogan and didn't even inhale? Can you believe that? I watched that footage a hundred times. The guy didn't even inhale. And NASA is concerned about a culture of inappropriateness. How about faking the moon landing? How about faking Mars landers up in Greenland? How about your culture of inappropriateness? NASA? How about buying into the global warming ruse so that you can control the narrative? How about the fact that NASA was set up by the CIA to fake the moon landing? And now it's a big pile of crap because they don't even do any science. How about that? Is that inappropriate enough? I wish Elon Musk actually inhaled that joint. But clearly you could tell from that interview that he never even smokes pot. He's a fraud. 
<laughs> Musk is a fraud. He doesn't even know how to smoke a joint. And NASA is going to investigate him because he didn't inhale. The culture of inappropriateness. Look in the mirror. This is the way it is getting. It's rushing towards this. The pot calling the kettle black. It's as if they did smoke crack. That's whack. Thank you, Whitney. Americans, Canadians are warned not to eat romaine lettuce. None of it. None of it in the entire Northern Hemisphere. It's tainted and they don't know where the source is. Now, do you realize how many millions upon millions of tons of food are going to be destroyed because the systems that are providing you with food are corrupt and toxic and polluted and broken and is going to continue to break before your very eyes and before your very lives. It started with contamination at Chi Chi's back in the 90s and it is going to roll over into a cacophony of contaminated products so there's no more food left or you can't even buy a can of food. Prepare now. I can't warn you enough. You're about to get priced out of your survival. And they don't care. Health officials in the U.S. and Canada told people Tuesday to stop eating romaine lettuce after hundreds of millions of people are still eating romaine lettuce in every restaurant around the entire planet. Chicken Caesar salad, please. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration said it's working with officials in Canada on the outbreak, which is sick in 32 and 11 states, 18 people in the Canadian provinces in Ontario and Quebec. The strain identified as different than the one linked to the romaine earlier this year, but it appears similar, and it will kill you if your weakened immune system allows it. Elderly and children are the most at risk. The contaminated lettuce is likely to be still on the market everywhere in the fucking world, the Associated Press said. FDA wanted to issue the warning before people gathered for Thanksgiving. Of course, they're all watching the news to find out that their romaine is contaminated and millions of people are about to ingest contaminated romaine lettuce because they believe the powers that be are protecting them at the FDA and the government are going to... No, they're all, it's all safe. They love us so much. That's tonight's first boom. If you don't get it yet, you'll never get it. Don't buy the lettuce. Grow it. Bear faces billion dollar losses related to legal claims of deadly Roundup herbicide. Yeah, that's because back in the 90s, Monsanto claimed that Roundup was biodegradable. And now we know that it is cancerous. And yet, they spray it on 90% of all the food that you eat. 90% of all the food in the center of the supermarket that's in a box or a bag has Roundup in it. And you feed it to your children, you feed it to your kids, you feed it to yourself because you're a sheep. The food you eat is food for sheep. And not only that, it contains herbicide and pesticide that would kill those animals. But it passes right through your poop and goes right into your toilet and goes right into your landfill and is contaminating the world. Because the people in control of the food supply are killing you slowly. And you allow it. I don't allow it anymore. Bear aspirin, Monsanto patented aspirin in 1902. It's the most deadly over-the-counter drug available to anyone that wants to commit suicide. Ten aspirin and a glass of water and you're dead. The most painful death available for less than a dollar. Because I know if you go to a dollar general, you can get 60 aspirin for a dollar. It's disgusting. And legal. Just like alcohol. But pot, the devil's weed, will put you in jail for decades. A natural plant remedy that cures cancer and hundreds of other inflammatory ailments is being withheld from the public. So you suffer and then you have to pay millions of dollars to insurance, pharmaceutical companies to keep you sick. Who's sick? 
society's sick. They're so sick that they think the grand solar minimum is over. People in our own community are saying, oh, there's two uh, reverse polarity sunspots up north uh, of the equator of the sun. Oh, yeah, it's over. <coughs> well, I, have I got news for you. The mainstream itself predicts that the solar minimum is going to last until 2020. Here is the data coming from NOAA. Even Tamitha Skov would not deny what I'm saying. So why she obfuscates the truth and saying we're going back? Oh look, there's sunspot cycles for 25. Sunspot cycle 25 is not going to begin until 2020, which is over a year from now, a whole nother winter. And grand solar minimums are not for three years during a solar minimum. They last for multiple cycles, 40 to 200 years. That's for a grand minima, and we are predicted to have a super grand minima. That's 100 to 350 years. That's 10 to 30 solar cycles. That's the grand minima. We just came out of a grand maxima that went from the 50s till the 2000s. We're talking solar cycle 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. That is solar max. That went for five cycles. Solar minimum will go for at least five more cycles. Grand solar minimum goes for four to ten cycles. Super grand minima, ten to twenty cycles or more. And it is my prediction that we are at the end of the interstadial, which means cooling will continue for 1,400 years and we will be in a glacial period for 10,000 plus. Follow the facts. If you can't see the facts right here in these numbers, then I can't help you. 12 gigatons of ice yesterday on Greenland. Record ice building and no one is reporting on it. The angle of this curve in the Arctic associated with Arctic ice volume is record. The speed of ice building is unprecedented. It hasn't been seen for 30 years. And it's going to increase to levels unseen. And there will be no escape from the truth. And that's all we can hope for. The truth to come through. Let's talk more truth. Charles Hutchins Hapgood, 1904-1982. Last night we talked about the shifting pole. The rotational pole, not the magnetic pole, which we know is shifting. But the catastrophic shifting of the rotational pole causing a mass extinction in recent times. Charles Hapgood came up with this information back in the 50s. He published a book through his academic career as well into his retirement years he pursued personal research projects that centered on controversial and largely disputed topics. His first published work Earth Shifting Crust a key to some basic problems on earth sciences in 1958 was followed and revised in 1970 as the path of the pole. And this all comes from the idea that Nazca is exactly on the opposite of the Earth as Anchor Watt and the Mercator projection lines and the Piriris map all would suggest that Antarctica was near the equator recently. And I believe that. And if you don't believe it, then you don't believe in facts. The Piriris map was composed 500 years ago from an older source, which couldn't have been more than 500, 1,000 years older than that, which couldn't have come from a source much older than that. So Antarctica probably was near the equator quite recently. And what I mean by that, geologically speaking, was within 10, 20,000 years. Or we would have lost that information. Do you ever whisper down the lane? It's insane. It goes away. The information gets drained. So there's only so much we can glean from ancient mythology. But Charles Hutchins Hapgood, 
he figured it out. The Adam and Eve story by Chan Thomas came out in 65 and was classified by the CIA. Now, Charles Hutchins Hapgood was one of the first people to work for the CIA before it was even called the CIA. So, the collusion has been going on time immemorial. The suppression of his history and facts has been going on forever. The number one thing they're trying to do is keep you from the truth. Because the truth will set you free. It will make you quit your job, change your life, and rethink materialism. You can be just as happy in a mud hut as you can be in a mansion. And I guarantee you most people in mansions are miserable. Because they've been lied to. Your way of life is not the way of life. You're a slave. Hapgood's theory of Earth's crustal displacement by Steve Krauss back in 1996. Check it out. Links below. It's the sun. Not you. Not CO2. CO2 has a three to 500 year lag time between temperature. The reason CO2 is rising now is because it is the effect of the medieval warm which happened a very long time ago. And that's a ho-ho-ho. It goes up gradually and steadily, just like the medieval warm did, because it is the expression from the oceans of CO2 on the Earth. The Earth is a dynamic climate system. It's not a linear anything. And it is not a computer model, which have been wrong up to 500% over the last three decades. Do you want to believe a model that's off for 500%? Or do you want to believe the sun, which has been correct all along? Smoke a bong. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. It's not you. It's the burning plasma sphere in the sky that is connected to a Birkeland current, which is part of your consciousness. There is no thermonuclear reactor in the center of this blazing ball because the blazing area you're looking at is the plasma sphere way above the surface of the cold sun. We know the sun is five to 7,000 Kelvin. Do you know how hot the plasma sphere is? Millions of degrees. There is no way you can get that amount of heat outside of the cold surface of the sun, regardless of what they tell you. They're lying. The sun is a ferrite cold ball, just like that plasma ball you buy at Spencer's in the mall. And there is electricity that is glowing above the surface of it that we call the sun. The solar wind from this plasma sphere creates all of the elements in your solar system. You are a child of this sun, our sun. You are the sun. The sun is God. You are God. We love each and every one of you. Look within. The answers are there. They've been there forever. They will never go away. You need to find them. We love you. Be safe.